Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and in Middlesex County. Today, we're joined by London Mayor Ed Holder, the Warden of Middlesex County, Kathy Burkhardt-Jessen, and the CEO and, middle and Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. As always, we welcome the media in attendance and invite them to ask their questions using the question forum here on Microsoft Teams. And we uh, would also like, if they could, to please indicate their name and their media outlet. And welcome also to people who are joining us on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners on Global News Radio, AM 980 CFPL, and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Let's get to opening statements right away, and we'll start with London Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thanks, uh, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, it was a great weekend for all and a meaningful Father's Day. Uh, and a few quick points uh, from my perspective. It was a relatively quiet weekend from the standpoint of bylaw enforcement. We focused on high touch areas such as playground equipment. And I should let, let you know that six warnings were issued to families using that equipment, which was not taped off. No charges were issued as a result of that. And our crews have reapplied caution tape to numerous playground equipment throughout the city. Uh, beyond that, pickup service launches at three more uh, London Public Library locations today. So as you know, we've uh, made uh, service accessible at the Central Library branch, where we ask visitors to use the Dundas Street entrance uh, to access the pickup area that's inside. Uh, in addition to the pickup service, uh, there is public computer service at the Central Library branch Monday through Thursday and Fridays on lim and Saturdays on limited hours. Uh, visitors will get a 45 minute computer session a day per person, first come first serve, and that's with a valid library card. So just to give you a sense of that, that uh, uh, when public computer service isn't available elsewhere, Cherry Hill and Sherwood branches have also resumed pickup service as of today. Again, that's for people convenience and we thought you should be aware. Finally, I'd like to uh, commend uh, city staff and Richmond Row merchants as they work together to quickly modify the additional space we opened up last Friday for cyclists and pe pedestrians. You would know it's a six block stretch from Mill Street to Kent Street on Richmond, where one southbound lane has been open to pedestrians, cyclists and businesses to create a new shared space. After hearing from a handful of merchants, adjustments were made uh, same day in a matter of hours to better accommodate business pickup when there was space to work with. I want to reiterate that shared space is flexible, adaptable, uh, and we'll continue to collaborate with businesses as part of the COVID response. We're pretty uh, impressed by how well everyone worked together. We say thank you to them as we work towards our economic recovery. And a general reminder to folks from Middlesex County and all of London, shop local, it matters now more than ever. Thanks and over to you, Warden Cathy. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Ed. It's great to be with you on this uh, cloudy but warm Monday afternoon. And uh, like you, I do hope that everybody had a wonderful weekend and a happy Father's Day. Um, today, I've got some great news to share, and that's with regards to Strathmere Lodge. Uh, this is the first day under new protocols that uh, outdoor scheduled and super supervised visits will be allowed. And this, of course, is wonderful news, not only for the residents, but for their loved ones. Uh, there are pro protocols in place, and these can all be found on the Middlesex County website under the Strathmere Lodge tab. But it's important for visitors to know that in order to meet with their loved ones, um, they must provide lab test results for COVID-19 indicating a negative result within two weeks of a visit. So it's important uh, to note that for repeat visitors, that will mean uh, that visitors will have to be tested uh, every two weeks. So I'd encourage uh, you to call Strathmere Lodge to make your appointments, to visit with your uh, residents that are important to you. And um, as I said, refer to the Middlesex County website for the list of all the protocols. Um, as we know, there are only testing facilities right now uh, located in the city um, and county residents, of course, are able to access those uh, testing facilities. 
And I've spoken with Dr. Mackey, and I'm really uh, pleased and encouraged to hear that our residents have been taking advantage of being tested at these facilities. However, in an effort to make testing accessible, I would encourage you uh, residents to speak with your family doctor. Our Middlesex London Health Unit will work with local physicians to get testing into our communities. And certainly this will help with accessibility and prepare us for a potential second wave. Um, an update I'd like to share with you with regards to Middlesex County Libraries. Um, starting this week at the Strathroy uh, branch, we will be rolling out uh, the gradual curbside pickup um, uh, pro, uh, process. So again, please refer to the Middlesex County uh, Library social media um, or call the uh, Strathroy branch directly um, and you can order books and pick them up right at the branch. And with that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Mackey. Thank you very much, uh, Warden Burkhardt, Justin and Mayor Holder. Uh, we've had a pretty light weekend from the point of view of coronavirus cases. Zero, three, and one cases each of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and no deaths over the weekend either. Uh, so that's looking uh, quite positive. Our regional cases have been reasonable as well. The uh, total for yesterday was just over 160 cases provincially, which is another new low uh, since the very uh, beginning of April. The uh, you know what, Dan, I think I'm going to pause there. There are lots of changes that have been happening, but I'm interested in where our audience wants to go with those changes. Uh, the, you know, the emergency order has been extended, um, working closely with long term care with um, uh, migrant farm workers as well. Uh, lots to discuss if folks are interested. Well, there we go. We do have a few questions and certainly room for more. So if you are tuning in today and you do have questions about some of those changes that have come about as the London and Middlesex region moves to stage two, you can include those along uh, as well. Uh, questions about migrant workers, questions about long term care and retirement re retirement residences. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right, well, let's get to the questions that we already have in the queue that are ready to go. Dr. Mackey, the first one is for you. It comes from Grant Demi at My FM Radio in Strathroy. Dr. Mackey, we heard the additional case in Strathroy Caradoc is a Strathroy Walmart employee. Can you confirm this? And do you have any more information regarding the patient and their well-being? Well, we've heard that from uh, that same rumor from many sources as well. I can tell you that in this case, there was no exposure, uh, no significant contact with employees or uh, with customers at the Walmart. Uh, this individual was not involved in food preparation or any consumables at all. So essentially the risk to the public uh, related to the case in Strathroy is, uh, is pretty close to zero. All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey. Uh, next question I'm thinking is for, uh, I would think Dr. Mackey and also Mayor Holder, you're gonna have some, some say, I think, uh, for this question. Uh, while London Transit is requesting that riders wear masks, London Transit Chair Phil Squire says he'd like to see the health unit mandated. Is this something the health unit is considering? Why or why not? Dr. Mackey, if you'd like to speak to that and Mayor Holder afterwards, if you uh, would like to add anything on behalf of uh, London for London Transit. Sure, happy to, Dan. So the public health legislation, uh, the Health Protection Promotion Act, does allow medical officers of health to make orders that are deemed necessary to contain a serious infectious disease threats like coronavirus. And also there are limits on how that legislation can be used. Uh, we have both an ethical framework and a legal framework within which we operate. And both of those require that we try other methods before using coercive methods that would force people to do something. Uh, so in circumstances where those uh, coercive methods, mes um, methods are needed, we absolutely don't hesitate to use them. But what we're seeing in this situation is that uh, we've we've had only a handful of cases linked with uh, any LTC transportation, and uh, we're actually seeing case counts dramatically decline in our community. 
uh, the communities that have used mandatory uh, mandatory masking are communities that have much higher rates of coronavirus. Toronto was trending at about three times the rate of the Middlesex London area when they implemented mandatory masking on their transit. Uh, Windsor is about twice the rate here and in uh, Guelph where masks have been mandated the rate is about 25% uh, higher than in Middlesex and London. So it's not surprising that some of the other communities have decided to uh, mandate masking. At this point, our, our existing public health measures are working well to contain the outbreak. And uh, there is also uh, you know, some limitations to the evidence of effectiveness of masks. We know that they are not a cure-all. They do not eliminate the need for you know, physical distancing. And uh, so as much as we support the use of masks, we don't believe that the evidence uh, or our local epidemiological data suggests that mandating masks is the right thing to do at this stage. It's certainly something we will continue to watch. Uh, and if necessary, we won't hesitate to do that. All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey, for that response. Um, there's a fall, uh, Mr. Mayor, did you? Yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> My apologies. Thanks. Too quick on the button, I think, Dan. Uh, for, well, first, I agree with uh, Dr. Mackey uh, entirely in terms of what he said. A couple of things I would add. First, I think uh, masks uh, give a false sense of security. That would be a concern that I would have when, in fact, the issues around physical distancing and and great attention to personal hygiene, washing of hands and uh, hand sanitizers all and everything that you do helps and matters. The second thing I'd like to uh, mention is that uh, using Toronto Transit uh, Commission as a model uh, is interesting because while on one hand it may well be mandatory, uh, it is not, they are not enforcing it. So how do you go to one hand where you say you have to have it, but by the way, if you don't, there's no, uh, there's no penalty associated with it. So uh, I think it becomes a bit of a, uh, again, uh, a, a potential for it not to be consistently administered over the 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 course of the of the of the uh, of the transit commission there. So from our standpoint, if we do it, we'll do it right, but we'll do it with appropriate medical evidence and uh, and uh, with the appropriate direction to residents. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Dr. Mackey, because uh, that is a question that uh, we've heard quite a bit in the last couple of days. So thank you for addressing that. Uh, in the way that you have. Um, I'm looking at the question uh, forum here and that is uh, that is it right now. We have run the questions dry. So uh, I'd like to thank the three of you once again for joining us. It's always great to have you available to answer these questions and to respond. So uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Warden Burkhart Jessen, Dr. Mackey. We'll see Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder tomorrow and Madam Warden, we'll see you again soon. Thank you for joining us for this virtual media briefing, and we'll be back tomorrow uh, at 2 p.m. Have a great rest of your day.